Okay, like um, I said in our first part, we had just like little introduction of uh, what we have made, um, and that was our uh, an oximeter using our LM386, uh, which is an audio op amp. So let's get back to cable, which is very important uh, part how to make uh, cable. In um, making cable, we need to know first off. Uh, we need to connect three wires even if we have four connections and for that we will use audio cable uh, which has a uh, ground connected to this uh, bit there no, which is first ring then we have power 5 volts that will power lead connected uh, here and we have power uh, of 5 volts connected to infrared uh, detector through the resistors obviously and this one is going through resistors which is 150 ohms that middle one uh, and I use pot which is 1k so that gives me really a lot of uh, uh, control of uh, the lead and uh, on detector we have around 200k not uh, just resistor we have a 83k resistor and we have a 100k uh, pot potentiometer so let's get back now to how we need to connect our lead first lead you can use your multimeter and connect a black one to let's say this wire which is minus here and red one here and if you get your LED light to uh, actually show you the light a little bit of light then you have that connection right if you don't swap it simple as so you want your negative to be on this side and positive on this side in this example uh, your detector connect as well to multimeter uh, connect uh, to let's say 2 meg on your multimeter and put black one let's say on one side and red on the other side and move it around in daylight and you'll notice where you have bigger source of daylight that uh, actually resistance uh, changes if you notice that and your black one is connected on multimeter on this side red one on this one then you have them right way now you need to connect your negatives into one and we have done that by uh, doing uh, like this yeah and then um, on our cable we'll have ground which is brown and uh, blue one which is powered in uh, uh, 5 volts to infrared lead and the red one will power let's say uh, your detector so let's get back now to cable connect multimeter to a blue one let's say or whichever color it is first connect multimeter to ground black one and find with your other end of your multimeter ground here then connect to any wire and if you detect that middle one and that happens that this is blue one then blue one you will connect uh, to your uh, lead and connect multimeter to your red and then connect it to your bottom one sorry I moved it <laughs> off uh, connect let's get back ground to multimeter and check it here uh, where do you get reading then connect uh, your detector on multimeter here and connect it on bottom one and you should get reading then connect your blue wire and uh, middle one in this section there and you should get reading so if you connected everything right uh, that's how it should be on your jack audio jack you have ground connected here 
and that will be connected when you plug it into this one you have your LED light on your this side and these two are like one they are connected anyway and on the other side you have two they are connected as well so it doesn't matter they they work as one so that will be your detector uh, for this example I have used infrared LED and detector which is rated as 900 nanometers and that's very important so if you have connected everything right this is how it should look so picture it or freeze it or you can slow it uh, stop it and that's it uh, you can um, make your cable and make your uh, fingertip uh, finger clip uh, for your finger so we will move now on to schematics which is in this example I don't need uh, this I don't need those connections at all okay we're going back to Jack so we have here ground and it goes right to ground here we have 5 volts from going from here and those 5 volts are split in two one is powering detector through a 100k pot and it goes in 83k uh, resistor and it goes right in your audio jack like we explained in previous example and then your signal when you receive some if you don't receive anything it will be 5 volts so you have 200k roughly sensitivity here and if you receive signal it will drive it to the ground so your signal will uh, depend uh, will be different between 5 and 0 obviously because of 200k it won't be really that much down to 0 but uh, 0 volts but uh, you will be able to fine tune it yourself this this way then signal goes out into capacitor I will get back to signal after so we go now on 5 volts again goes here under the, this resistor and it goes back uh, onto 150 ohms resistor and it goes on pot 1k and it goes right in your jack and that powers your LED when you turn it to uh, turn pot to minimum actually only stays 150 ohms and uh, that's full power when turn this to maximum then your LED will be really weak and that's what you want to, to set it up to really weak when uh, you start getting your signal and then gradually increase it it's very important because you will not get signal and you will be disappointed then once you get signal here on the screen then increase sensitivity of your so previously you have to put this pot to minimum as well that means on this side actually and then gradually increase it uh, and you will get a signal so okay let's say now we have signal signal is coming out here and it goes in a uh, uh, capacitor which is uh, I'm not sure what capacitor I have put in this schematics uh, probably I think oh god I have to have a look I think it's one UF uh, and it goes through 83k right in your pin on your LM uh, pin number three your LM is turned up this way you have that little uh, mark that's your pin one two three four five six seven eight seven is bypass and we don't need it in this example so our signal went in pin number three number two is one of the inputs as well but it's attached to the ground uh, ground is attached to pin number four and uh, pin number six is five volts that we get from this 
as well and we power our LM. On LM we have one interesting thing to control the gain. If we take all this off and don't connect anything to pin number 1 and 8 we have 20, uh, gain of 20. Uh, but if we connect uh, only one uh, capacitor of uh, 10 UF without this spot we will get 200 uh, gain. And I put 1k pot so I can actually fine tune it here. And the uh, capacitor has to be this end, has to go positive side, has to definitely end up on pin number one. And your negative side of your capacitor has to end up on pin number eight. So now when we have signal, we can move on to filtering. Signal goes here like that and it goes in uh, I have changed this in uh, reality. I put one pot uh, of 10k and then in series I connected 22k uh, resistor and then that goes travels further down. But uh, here we break it with an capacitor and ground it uh, here to ground. This wire is connected to ground as we can see. Uh, it goes here to ground. So value of this capacitor is 0.47 UF and resistor plus spot is 32K. I have 22K resistor in series connected with 10K pot. That's 32. When you do your calculation that will give you uh, low pass filter be ranging between 33 hertz and uh, 72 so you can get rid of your 60 hertz signal goes further down to 100k resistor and 104 rated uh, capacitor which is ceramic uh, or value of that capacitor is 0.1 uf you drive your signal here and this I have added only 400, uh, 470k uh, resistor to ground to get rid of some impedance but you can get it out and it will just work fine as well. Uh, and then signal travels around and it goes right in your pin number A1, A0. That's your analog uh, A0 and that's when you get your signal. These in middle section you can exclude, I made that for reading signal after first, low pass after second and we don't need it for this example, it could be excluded. Um, let's move on, on to uh, the real signal now. Okay, okay let's move on to signal now. That's the reading that we get and uh, so if someone knows a little bit about this signal, you can see that you have two sections. Peak when it goes really up and then uh, halfway it stops and it moves uh, the other way forward and then it goes down. Uh, this what you can witness on the screen is my PVC, that's uh, uh, what is called uh, premature ventricular contraction. And it's just because my heart is not bumping uh, equally right. And uh, as you can see, there is a gap between now this is okay. I made it a uh, program uh, when it finishes uh, about 100,000 samples, it just uh, closes. Uh, but uh, I can just reactivate it and it will do 100 samples. Yeah. So more or less so this is end of it actually how we make it and what you get is pretty gold clean signal. I would mention only that uh, if you talking about 60 hertz noise in this example you will get 60 hertz noise only if you have light in room uh, because light bulb uh, flashes about 60 times in second and that's reflected through your finger on detector as well 
So if it's no light in your room, you will notice that you don't have any noise. Uh, but noise we can reduce on um, uh, actually um, using that filter which we have and that pot. So more or less, so that's it. Yeah. Hope you can recreate it. Uh, I'll put this uh, all downloadable so you can download it and I will make PDF file which is uh, like it will be like manual so you can actually have all details to talk you through and explain everything where you can fail and what you need to pay, pay attention but I'm sure that you will get the same signal as I do and then we can do that to detect uh, detect our uh, heartbeats and everything and I'll make one little function as well to do that um, later. I have made in this program actually each of these bars as you can see is 250 milliseconds so you can actually if you calculate the gap you can tell what's your heartbeat and then divide it divide number of milliseconds by 60,000 you will get actually heartbeats and um, that's it hope it's useful to all of you um, hope you recreate it uh, and make it for yourself Thank you for watching.